Hello and welcome to ABA Made Easy. I'm Mauricio and today we'll be talking about autism. Over the years, psychologists have tracked the development of individuals throughout their lifetime and notice that we hit milestones at very specific points in time. If there's a delay in one of these milestones, you might be at risk for a neurodevelopmental disorder. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, is what physicians used to diagnose and define different mental states. In the previous version of the DSM, the DSM-4, autism was categorized under pervasive developmental disorder along with Asperger's Syndrome, Childhood Disintegrative Disorder, and also PDD not otherwise specified. Since these pervasive developmental disorders, or PDDs, were so hard to differentiate, the DSM-5 changed the definition and made it all under one umbrella term called Autism Spectrum Disorders. So all the pervasive developmental disorders were categorized under this umbrella term. That's why sometimes you hear people refer as people with autism as on the spectrum. To diagnose someone with autism, a physician observes the individual in the clinic and asks the parents questions about the behaviors of the child in the home. So how does autism look like? Well, each individual is different. That's why they say that if you've met one child with autism, you've met one child with autism because everyone is different and everyone has different strengths and deficits. Some common deficits you'll see is deficits in communication and social interactions, such as less eye contact, a delay in acquiring language, understanding and performing body language, or using aggressive behaviors towards themselves or others in order to communicate. Repetitive behaviors are also pretty common these include echolalia, so if they're repeating what they hear often, hand flapping, lining up toys, body rocking, and extreme sensitivity to changes in routine. It's important to remember that intelligence is not correlated in any way with autism. People with autism range anywhere from having low IQ to being intellectually gifted. So what are some red flags that you should be looking out for as your child is developing? At six months old to a year, if you notice any avoidance of eye contact, that could be a red flag. If at one year, the child isn't babbling or pointing to anything or responding to any sounds, that can also be a red flag. If by one and a half years, you notice rocking, hand flapping, or head banging, or if you notice that there's no single word sentences or any type of loss of language, that could be a sign of autism. By two years, you should be seeing two word sentences. And by three years, the child should be engaging in pretend play and should not be exhibiting echolalia as explained earlier. If you're interested in more details regarding red flags and milestones your child should be exhibiting at certain ages, I have put a link in the description highlighting all those points. So what causes autism? Well seems to be a merge between genetic and environmental factors. The thing that really pushes the genetics is this paper which looked at twins, siblings, and cousins, and it shows that the closer you are in relatability, the more likely you are to have autism if the other person has autism. You're also most more likely to have autism if either of the parents have advanced age, if there is a complication during birth, or if you have a specific genetic microdeletion. I have put links to all these studies in the description below. But since autism is a spectrum and can possibly be caused by hundreds of different causes and can involve hundreds of different genes working in unison, a lot more research has to be done. One place we don't need any more research dollars is finding out if the MMR vaccine is in any way responsible for autism. It's not. This myth, perpetuated by a 1998 paper looking at 12 individuals, nine of which had autism, 
has since been retracted. 10 out of the 12 authors retracted the original findings. Only the original author kept his claim, but he has since lost licensure and it cannot practice medicine. Multiple studies were done after public concern of this paper, and they show no link between the MMR vaccine and autism. These studies have looked at thousands of different individuals, and it's what's accepted by the scientific community. So now that we know what it looks like, and we are certain that genetic and environmental factors are at play to cause autism, how do we go about treating it? Well, a lot of people with autism function just fine in society. Uh, if anything, I think society should be more flexible and play on the strengths of people with autism. But there are some individuals where these deficits can impede on functioning in society. So the goal is not to change the perception of the person, more so it's teaching skills in how to function in our society. These include self-care, like washing your hands and brushing your teeth, and socialization skills. And for that, we have applied behavior analysis. The nature of applied behavior analysis is a lot of repetition. And what this repetition does in the brain is that it strengthens the synapses or connections between the brain cells. So once you have these connections strengthened, you can develop skills that will help improve your quality of life. What I like about applied behavior analysis is that it's evidence-based, and so you can see if something is working or not. And over the years, applied behavior analysis has shown time and time again to be the most effective therapy with people with autism. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with anyone you think would find this helpful. I noticed my subscriber count is almost at a thousand, so thank you, thank you, thank you everyone who subscribed to this channel. It means a lot. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like this video if you found it helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.